Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna show you how to set up PyCom, which is a compositor. That's what's allowing for this beautiful blurring effect and a partial transparency on a window that I'm not currently tabbed into. If I go ahead and make this window active, we go back to 100% opacity. Uh, PyCom is also what's allowing for these beautiful rounded corners here. Uh, you can do stuff like window shadows, window opacity options, window rules, uh, window animations, all sorts of different stuff. And um, honestly, it is one of the best programs you can have if you wanna make your window manager look better. Um, so you can get it with either PyCom or PyCom-Git. And both of these are for this particular fork of PyCom from YShui, I think would be how that would be pronounced. I don't know. But anyways, this is pretty much the best fork available. It used to be there were a bunch of different competing forks and PyCom is actually a fork of a fork of a fork. Um, but anyways, this is a very well-maintained fork and has had a lot of features for quite a while now. So uh, this is the one available in the Arch repos and it's the one I'm going with. So uh, once you've got it installed, uh, you could go ahead and launch it with PyCom uh, dash B. Actually, let me kill the one I've currently got uh, going here. Um, anyways, so well, this is what TWM looks like without it. But anyways, PyCom dash B will launch it uh, daemonized and you can even specify a configuration file if you wanted to. So uh, I've got my config in dot config, oops, dot config, PyCom, and then PyCom dot conf. Um, so I can go ahead and run that. Um, you actually don't even need to run it with a config. You could just go ahead and run it with specific options. If you had, you know, only one option that you wanted, you could just put that option in the command to run it and not even have a config. But if you want to do a bunch of options, it's probably a lot easier to just set up a config. And if you want to, you can copy in the uh, example config, it's in Etsy, xdg, and then pycom.conf.example. And uh, this is a pretty good example config since you could just run this by itself if you wanted to. It's pretty well configured, but um, it actually explains a lot of what's going on here. It's got a bunch of other options available that are commented out. So uh, yeah, this is pretty useful. But anyways, I'm gonna walk you through my own configuration, which um, if you do wanna just steal my configuration, I will uh, upload it to my GitHub and link that. So you can go steal it if you want to, or just uh, modify it. Uh, but anyways, the first thing I'm going on, I've got going on here is the inactive opacity. So 80% opacity on windows that I'm not currently, um, that are not currently active or I'm not currently tabbed into whatever you want to call it. So um, I'm currently, you know, in the window on the left right now. If I go to the window on the right, I'm now in that and the opacity is changing as I go between them. And I do actually have my terminals all partially transparent in the first place. That's just in my ST build uh, since I've got alpha patched in. Uh, but, you know, by default, my windows are not partially transparent. Like if I open a new window here, this is going to go transparent. But if I go back to this one, it's not transparent anyway. So that's inactive versus active opacity. If for some reason you did want to change active opacity, so on windows you're currently in, uh, you could do that. Um, there's frame opacity as well, so for the window frame, and then a few other opacity options. And it's worth mentioning, um, neither my configuration nor the example configuration has every single option defined. If you do want to look at every single option, uh, you can check out the documentation, which I will link in the description. Pretty useful documentation here. So, um, the rules option here is pretty important, and there's rules available. You can set them up for pretty much every option in PyCom. Um, so for example, this rule is saying for a non-focused Firefox instance, set it to 50% opacity. Um, and this essentially works with just setting up the window class and to figure out window classes, you can just use uh, xprop here. Uh, that'll change your cursor. Just click on what you want to figure out the class for. Um, and uh, it's also worth mentioning for DWM and DMenu in particular, this is actually uh, mentioned on the Arch Wiki here. Uh, they don't have window classes by default. If you do want to be setting specific window rules for them and you need a class to do that, you would have to patch it into the source code. Um, I personally don't care enough to do that, but you can do that if you want to. Um, anyways, so yeah, this is generally how you would define rules for various windows. So that way you can actually exclude windows from having options apply. So, you know, say you have, you know, Firefox and you want it to always be 100% opaque at every moment, you could set that up. Um, rounded corners, probably pretty self-explanatory, but that's what's making the corners rounded. By default, it's just going to be zero. So if I just remove this line here um, and go ahead and write that, um, it's now unrounded corners. And you can actually see um, everything live updates as I change it in the configuration, which is pretty useful if you want to just be playing around to see, you know, what looks good. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's corner radius. 
Uh, you could also set rounded corners to be excluded on a specific window type or window class. And um, Dunst is for notifications, so if I didn't want rounded corners on notifications, I could have that be a thing. Um, blurring, which is what probably most of you are here for. This is um, the true beauty of having a compositor. Uh, by default, you're not going to have any blurring, so if you do have transparency, it's not going to blur anything behind it. But you can actually set up different methods, so you have uh, Gaussian blur, box blur, you can actually define a custom blur kernel if you wanted to do that, or dual kawase, which is what I'm using. I personally like how that looks, and I've got that set up with a size value and a strength value. The strength value is the main thing contr controlling how blurred it is, so if I change this to like, um, I don't know, 9 or something, um, now that's like super blurred and um, that actually doesn't look too bad, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change that back. Uh, anyways, and then there's a few various options you can set up with uh, the blurring if you wanted to, but the custom blur kernels, if for some reason you're not happy with any of the default available methods, you can actually define a custom kernel. You can completely define it uh, with your with different values for everything. Honestly, I have not tried to do this because this kind of looks like a mess, uh, but there are predefined kernels. So if you're not happy with any of the default methods, you could try some of these predefined kernels. Um, I guess if you're really not happy, you could go define your own blur kernel if you wanted to do that. But anyways, um, there's window shadows. Uh, I personally don't really like window shadows, but let me actually just, just toggle these on so you can see what it looks like. Uh, if I go ahead and write that, you'll see everything actually has a drop shadow on it now. And I could even uh, change the shadow offset if I wanted to do that. So essentially like what direction the lighting is going to be coming from, I guess. Um, but I don't really like that personally. Um, you can change uh, shadow hex color. I think you can also set uh, RGB colors for shadows as well. And you could, of course, you know, exclude shadows on specific windows if you wanted to do that. Um, next up is window fading, which I actually do have, even though it's a little bit hard to see just because I have it set to such a low delta value. Um, if I set this a little bit higher, you'll actually be able to see uh, windows fading in and out. And that is one of the various animations you can do, actually. Um, so, I don't know, I think fading is nice just at a small value. Um, I'm not really a huge animations person, but uh, it's actually, there's a bunch of animations available here. So, you can actually see in the documentation some previews of the presets if you wanted to, you know, preview and see what was available in terms of animations, if that's something you wanted. Um, and you can even define your own animations, which is kind of cool that that's supported. Um, but yeah, I'm not really a huge animations person, but yeah, this is all supported if you want to go figure that out. Um, and then there's a bunch of other settings, and this is actually one of the more important settings, the back end. So by default, you're going to have the X render back end, um, which is pretty slow compared to some of the others. So if you can, you could try changing it to GLX or EGL. Um, EGL is still experimental to my knowledge. I haven't had any issues personally with it, but uh, if you are having issues, you could try GLX. Um, but yeah, GLX is probably the one you're going to want to go with. But this is where you would change it. You could just set the uh, backend setting here and then pick what you want. Um, there's a few other settings and there's actually a bunch more settings um, detailed in the documentation. So if you want to actually look through and figure out every single setting available, you can check. But um, yeah, you can pretty much put as little as you want in a configuration or even in the launch command. And that'll just get you going with, you know, what you've specified. Um, oh, this wind types thing is actually pretty important. So um, if I right click here and just get this pop up menu, um, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it is actually partially transparent. It's also got a partial transparency frame and it's even blurring the background behind it. So you can set that up for pretty much anything you want. Um, and I guess that's under, yeah, this is under the wind types option here. So that's available as well. And oh, I just did add at the end there. You can use uh, PyCom-B to daemonize. Yeah, you probably just add that into like your X init RC or however you're normally launching stuff. So that way you can just go ahead and launch uh, PyCom when you start up. Uh, anyways, that's pretty much all the main settings. But yeah, I'm really a fan of how this looks. And if you don't like rounded corners on DWM, then too bad. I like it. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Peace.